first of all, <clears throat> who the hell is Marvin McNutt? Anyway, man, shout out to my guy Red, man. Drive the trucks, making sure everybody get their packages, making sure he deliver his haul, you know, driving around the country, man. Real proud of that guy, man. Always be tuned in or whatever. He sent me this list. I don't know if it was late at night or early in the morning, man, but it, it, it piqued my interest. And I told him that I was going to do a video about this. Now, mind you, this is the this is the wide receivers the Philadelphia Eagles have drafted over the last decade. You know what I'm saying? And um, the only thing worse than this is the list of defensive backs we drafted over the last decade. I'm going to be honest with you, man. You know what I mean? I think and I think. We have been the worst in the division at drafting prospects. You know what I mean? And, and it's real critical. This this proves it. How critical that it is that that we that that we must find a wide receiving coach and a defensive back coach that can identify and develop talent. I mean, we could talk about it. We can go over it, man. In 2010, we drafted Riley Cooper for what? You know what I mean? Riley Cooper, we took him 86 overall. And um, who won 87th? Eric Decker. I mean, who in our department saw more value in Riley Cooper than Eric Decker? Now, I'm not saying Eric Decker is a Hall of Famer, but ah, Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? Um, in 2012, McNutt. I mean, I mean, okay, I understand 2012 because 2012, you, you picked up Fletcher Cox, Vinny Curry, Nick. Nick Foles, you was, I mean, you did a lot in that draft, and you did a lot in that draft, you know what I mean, and I just don't under, I just don't understand it, man, you know what I mean, I just, I just don't understand certain things that, that transpired, you know what I mean, I guess in 2010, by that time, you already had uh, Deshaun Jackson and stuff like that, so we'll see, man, we'll see, um, 2014 got to be the worst draft from from these two positions of all time for the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, at number one overall, you take Marcus Smith at linebacker, who's not even in the league anymore, at 26th overall. Um, not number one overall, the 26th overall pick. That was our first round pick. Uh, you took him over Tank Lawrence, who went 34th. I don't understand who saw the value that Tank Lawrence wasn't better than Marcus Smith at linebacker. But at 42, you decided to take Jordan Matthews. Um, at 53, De at 53, Devontae Adams went. At 63, Jarvis Landry went. You see what I'm saying? Then at 86, you draft Josh Huff. So you pick Jordan Matthews and Josh Huff. Didn't look at Devontae Adams or Jarvis Landry in 2014. I just got a problem with that. You know what I mean? I don't know who, you, you know... Who is who's looking at these people and saying they good because they're not doing a good job? 2015, Nelson Aguilar, 20th overall. Um, I'm not really mad at the Nelson Aguilar pick. He's contributed to the franchise, actually. But to pick up Nelson Aguilar at 20th overall and not even look at Tyler Lockett at 86, like the third round somewhere. I mean, I don't understand how that can happen. Um, 2016, I'm kind of up and down about 2016. Carson Wentz did his thing. We picked Carson Wentz up. Isaac Samalu, he contributed. Um, Wendell Smallwood went at 153. 153 Wendell Smallwood. Um, I don't know if it was a feel good pick or whatever, but guess who went at 165? Tariq Hill. Tariq Hill. We picked Wendell Smallwood over Tariq Hill. Window Small would ain't do anything for the franchise but sit on the practice squad. And then at 233, um, you drafted Jalen Mills as a safety and don't even let him play safety. You let him play um, you, cornerback. And he's, you, you know, you know how that turned off for Jalen Mills there. Uh, the point I'm trying to make here is that, you know, in 2019, we saw more value in picking up Ortega Whiteside over um, DK Metcalf. We saw more value in Mac Hollins over a bunch of guys. Um, Shelton Gibson as well. I mean, this is just this is just the proof that the wide receiver coach and the defensive back coach are just critical to the operation moving forward for the Philadelphia Eagles. We have to hit on these. And I'm gonna to touch, I'm gonna to touch more, um, I'm gonna to touch on more of this situation in terms of, you know, wide receiver, uh, um, defensive back versus wide receiver. But you know, I think we did better than we did at wide receiver than we did at defensive back. Because defensive back is just ballpoint horrendous. Ballpoint horrendous. I'm not even gonna show the list right now. It's actually embarrassing, but I gotta show the list and I gotta talk about the list. But I'm gonna save that for another video. And you, you, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just disheartening that we don't have anybody that got an eye for talent in the organization, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, shout out to Harold Carmichael for getting busy his career and just being a wide receiver 
that the Philadelphia, you know, be, being a prototypical big wide receiver, the first one of his kind. I mean, there was really nobody with that body style, with that speed, with those hands like Harold Carmichael. Harold Carmichael birthed the style for guys like Megatron. Uh, he birthed the style for guys like Alshon Jeffrey, who wear his number for the same team today. The jersey should be retired. You know what I'm saying? He birthed the style for anybody. Um, Andre Johnson, any of these big body guys. You know what I'm saying? Everybody think that they, they always could manifest and have the next Harold Carmichael. That's what the Eagles thought when they drafted Jordan Matthews. They drafted him before, um, who did I say? Um, Devontae Adams. And um, so, uh, he, they drafted Jordan Matthews a little early. Point Blake period because of his size. Now size don't mean everything. You know what I mean? But shout out to Harold Carmichael for making his bones in the NFL, 70 years old, but finally being inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He deserves it. He's a legend for the Philadelphia Eagles. And he's literally like the second wide receiver that we've ever drafted to go into the Hall of Fame. The first one would be Tommy McDonald. That's sad. It speaks a lot to the first half of this video. The Philadelphia Eagles have to be better risk takers. They gotta be better risk takers, man. I mean, maybe Deshaun Jackson will get in the Hall of Fame. I think he will with some of the deep balls and some of the stuff he did. I think he'll get, he probably won't be first ballot, but I think Deshaun Jackson will get into the Hall of Fame. Um, but for Harold Carmichael to be the second wide, two, a week ago, we had one wide receiver inducted into the Hall of Fame. We were notoriously known for passing up on dudes who just solidified it and, and who were just legends at the position that got to change at some point you got to take a you got to take a chance and this shouldn't even be a chance it's a no-brainer and sometimes you just got to take the no-brainer guy man you know what i mean i hate to beat a dead horse but you got to take the guy that went to the, the, the school with the name and that performed sometimes sometimes you just got to do it we took a chance on carson wentz what did everybody say about carson wentz oh north dakota state you oh 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 Oh, he ain't really do. He went to North Dakota State University. What is that? That's what everybody said. Come on, man. You, you know you know it's programmed for these people to think that you're only as good as the prestigious school you went to. That's not always the case. But the amount of talent that the Philadelphia Eagles have passed on in the last decade is just mind-boggling to me. Now, I only went over the wide receivers for a reason. I wanted to let that marinate in process. I'm going to go over the defensive backs that we drafted in the last decade tomorrow, it's just mind boggling. You know what I mean? But not to take anything, not, not to dimmer the situation that we got somebody from our, from our franchise being inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame who absolutely deserves it. He's a model citizen. He's always doing what he got to do. He's been an ambassador. Uh, he's worked with the organization for many years. You know what I mean? I'm happy. I'm happy. You know what I mean? He's one, he got one of the most popular jerseys in Eagle history. You know what I mean? The Harold Carmichael, the long sleeve John. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just certain things that you can't take away from guys who've just been class acts on and off the field. Um, the Philadelphia Eagles got a lot of stuff that they got to look in the eye and say we need to be better at. You know, drafting talent is so huge this year, man. It's so huge because you have a franchise quarterback. You don't want to squander his years by not going out there and getting them the guy. Now, I'm looking at a lot of these project, projected drafts. People are saying who we should take in, in um, the first round. A lot of it points to a wide receiver. Um, and, uh, and the second pick, a lot of it points to a cornerback. You, listen, man, whoever come in and fill these positions for the Philadelphia Eagles need to be hired immediately. We got to have faith in these guys. We need to be hired immediately so they can get the ball rolling and get, get, getting on scouting some of this talent. That's what got to happen. The scouting, the scouting team got to be at work right now. We're not in the postseason anymore. We're not in the postseason anymore. We got needs. You see what I'm saying? And those needs have to be met when we're not playing football. Those need, the scouting team should have been hard at work at towards the last five games of the season. Cause you know what you need help in. You know what areas you need help in. And I'm telling you, man, you cannot you cannot afford this year to pass on a DK Metcalf, to pass on a Hollywood Brown. You can't afford to do that this year. This is a deep wide receiver class from what I'm hearing. You know I'm not big on college football, but I gotta be big on college football now. I gotta look at who's available, who's declaring for the draft at the wide receiver position. I gotta look at who's the top ranked guys. I got to. We gotta let this start being other teams' mistakes passing on guys. We gotta let it be other teams' mistakes. We can't afford to pass on nobody else. If you got the name and you got the swag, come on down. You're the next contestant playing for the Philadelphia Eagles. Let me know what you think in the comments.